and I shall be taking us on record. All right. All right. Good afternoon and welcome back to the Money Advantage podcast. We've got a wonderful face here with us today. You've seen him on our show before. The name is Mike McCallowitz, and I hope that I am professional at saying your last name, Mike. Very professional. You nailed it. You totally nailed it. <laughs> that is awesome. Well, Mike, we are having you back because there's so much fantastic work that you have done in Thank the you. space of entrepreneurship. And I know we've had you on, we talked about Profit First, yep. we've talked about uh, the Pumpkin Plan, and now you have a brand new book that you were launching called Get Different that we want to talk all about today. And your official launch date is September 21st. I just learned before the show. So if you are in a position where you are um, wanting to find out the most effective and radically simple marketing system in existence, we're going to hear all about that today. This is the time. So this book is all about marketing and what specifically you need to do to stand out and to be different and to be able to attract the right followers and, um, and clients and customers into your business. So we're talking with Mike McCallowitz. If you don't know him yet, go get his books. He is a perennial best-selling author of Profit First, Surge, The Pumpkin Plan, Fix This Next, Toilet Paper Entrepreneur, I think I might've forgot, and your newest release, Get Different. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so welcome. Welcome, Mike. <laughs> Thanks for having me. I, I really appreciate the introduction. The one caveat is that most simple and effective marketing system in existence. There's a little poetic license there. Maybe it's not the most in existence, uh, but I do hope that some of these methods will be profoundly impactful for folks. Awesome. Well, I love that. Bruce, thank you so much for being here uh, yet again on this amazing show today. Is there anything you want to share before we jump into this book and what it's all about? Yeah. So one of, one of the things I think I just want to share with the listeners is you know, marketing is one of those things that is the lifeblood of any business. But the other thing that the, 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 that I think I want, I'd like to instill and get Mike's ideas on this is that if you don't continue, continually innovate uh, in marketing with, with some strategies and principles that you live by, then it's going to become like white noise to people. And we all did. Yes. And so that's why you really need to constantly be looking at your, your marketing. Yeah, Bruce, I mean, you nailed that. That's a home run right out of the gate. There's a thing, as I was doing the research for this book, uh, I discovered this concept called habituation. And uh, how it works biologically is we have a thing called the reticular formation. It's a neural network, both figuratively and, and literally. It's a net that sits at the brainstem. And as stimulus comes in, inputs, its primary job is actually to disregard and ignore most things. It's the way we maintain focus. Because right now, any of us, we could stare at our desk. There's a thousand things there that could start causing us to drift and, and ask questions about, and we can go down these tangents forever. So the job of particular formation is ignore things unless it meets one of three qualifiers. Threats get prioritized. Our safety depends on it. So uh, that's the number one feature. The second function or, or thing that opens up the particular formation is opportunity. If, if there's a known opportunity, uh, we will pursue it. And there's a third way through, and it's the unknown or the unexpected, because our mind then has to open up to say, well, is this something I need to consider as a threat or opportunity? Mm-hmm. Everything else is ignorable. And it happens at a subconscious level. We just ignore stuff. You know, if you ever get, that's kind of ironic, if you ever get junk mail, we all get junk mail. <laughs> next, next time you go to your mailbox and get junk mail, you may notice uh, make a conscious effort just noticing this, how quickly you can rifle through. It's like garbage, garbage, garbage. Oh, check, garbage, garbage, garbage. We can go through it in milliseconds. And that's how fast our mind processes. The irrelevant is picked out because we've seen it before and it's no longer valuable. Mm-hmm. So fast forward to more modern marketing, email and so forth like that. The first time someone got a hey friend email, I remember the first time I got, I was like, oh my gosh, there's a friend that calls me friend. Like which friendly friend is this friend? And I'm like, oh, it's a it's a slimy marketing message. I don't mm-hmm. want this. Yeah. The next hey friend, I I was a little bit cautious. The third hey friend, I've never opened one again because I've become habituated to it. Mm-hmm. So to your point, our job when we market our business is to do something that is different than the norm. That's the only way to pierce through this. Because if you're the norm, you are white noise. You are habituated. You'll be ignored. 
Last little kind of asterisk I want to put here. I'm not saying you have to be outrageous. Some people here get different. Like, oh my gosh, I have to be this clown with the big floppy shoes and the yaka yaka horn walking around. No, 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 no. You simply need to do something that your market isn't doing to get in front of your customers. Mm, That is so good. I think what's interesting is when you talk about this book, you're saying that you're reinventing the way marketing is done. And I think, I mean, yes, marketing is something that if you're in business, you are also... I mean, it's almost like a double major. If you are going to major in business and build an entrepreneurship and build something that is a brand, you're also majoring in marketing and trying to figure out how to make sure that you're having that message that resonates with the right people to attract them into your fold. And so let's go ahead and talk about... um, how do we break through that habituation? What is it that we have to do that makes us different enough to stand out, but not outrageously crazy? Right, right, right. So there, there's two things. First of all, we have to overcome the biggest impedance to successful marketing for small business, which is our own fear. It, it's ironic that we want to stand out without standing out. We want to be noticed without being noticeable. And uh, I'll raise my hand and say, yes, I, I understand what you're saying. Yeah. yeah. And, and there's a whole, uh, we can go into human biology and why that there's an impetus for that. But uh, instead of doing that, it's just, it's just a fact. Um, and therefore, what we have to realize is this, our new framing, that we not only have a responsibility to market, but marketing is the ultimate act of kindness. You know, most people feel that marketing is bothersome. If I'm market, I'm bothering my prospects and customers. But the reality is, if what you offer is superior to the alternatives, if you respond faster, your service is more thorough, you are more kind. And chances are, if you're a small business owner, that is definitely the definition of you. You're more nimble because you are ingrained in the business yourself. If you are better than the competition, you have a responsibility to market. Because if the customer doesn't notice you and they go to the competition, that may be the customer's problem, but it's our fault. Mm. It's only kind if they can notice you. Now, that doesn't mean you have to force a decision upon them. That that may be manipulation, but get your offer in front of them so they can make an educated decision. That's an act of kindness. And so I inspire all small businesses that truly believe their offer is better because if it is, you better get it out there. We need it as consumers. So once you get past that framing and you now have the courage to start taking these steps, we follow a basic framework. There's three stages. Step one is you must differentiate. We already talked about that. It gets through the reticular formation. It's a, uh, it's, a, it's a human wiring. If we were doing this outside and something squiggles on the ground unexpectedly, we'll jump back and look down because that could be a snake threat. could be innocuous. Someone turned the hose on. Uh, maybe someone threw down uh, you know, a, a, a roll of money uh, and that's an opportunity. <laughs> so we'll evaluate it. Um, so do what the market doesn't do. And, and here's a lesson. Whatever the best practices are for marketing in your industry, probably the white noise. So don't do that. I am a fan of best practices in all elements of business. You know, what's the best way to hire? What's the best way to run efficiently? But when it comes to marketing, it's actually the best practices from other industries that our industry isn't doing that we want to take in. I call it R&D, rip off and duplicate. You know, <laughs> right? The, uh, <laughs> the next step, is, so there's a framework, I call it DAD is the acronym, D-A-D. First one is differentiate. But once you get noticed, um, you have about one-tenth of a second of attention. You do something different, people will notice, and they're qualifying you at a subconscious level, threat, opportunity, or are you ignorable? You have to show yourself as an opportunity. So that's what the attract phase is about. Speak to the customer's needs, or speak to the customer's interests, or educate or entertain the customer. Basically, whatever this prospect is, they have to feel that it is of service to them to stay engaged in this marketing piece, whatever it may be. And then we must matriculate them to the final stage, which is D, direct. So differentiate, attract, and then direct. Direct is where we give them specific and explicit direction, singular direction. Here's what you do with this information. Now, our goal in marketing is to move them to the final transaction, the sale. Sometimes it's appropriate. You're in market for a t-shirt. I send you an advertisement or have a website that says buy our t-shirt. That might be an appropriate direction because it's a small uh, monetary expenditure and therefore it's a lowered risk for people. But if you do a consultative service for like $10,000 for you to come to my website and say, give me a $10,000 deposit and let's get on the phone and talk about it, that might be too unreasonable and mm-hmm. people will walk away. So you have to have a specific direction for them to take that moves them closer to the transaction, but you want to do as efficiently as possible. So there's a balance here. 
Make sure they feel safe every step of the way, but also make sure that you're moving them toward the ultimate transaction and not waffling around. You know, that's really interesting. I love the acronym, but also, I mean, there's very just um, common sense things that are built into this. I mean, it's not a radical system. It's just really basic, good human kindness. And, and then there has to be a path to an offer or something that is the next way for them to build that relationship and enter into your circle or your sphere, whether it's getting on an email list or getting an offer for something that's free. Do you have something that you're, that you're recommending that is across the board for everyone, or does this really depend on you and your specific business? Yeah, it I'm depends sure on you question. and your industry. So, <laughs> yeah. So when you look at your prospects, the first question you ask yourself is how are they currently being approached? Then we need to either break the medium or the method. So if, uh, you know, I'm an author guy and uh, all authors uh, do an email blast out about their new book, which means prospects are getting inundated with, hey, author, new book, check it out. And at a certain point, we're just like, I can't handle one more of these emails. So I can break the medium, meaning the medium of email and say, you know what, maybe I'll do a billboard or I will do a radio show or something like that. But again, you want to do something that the prospect isn't hearing regularly. Even if someone outside your industry, if they're hearing, seeing all these billboards for different things, they may just blow by the billboard because I see billboards all the time. Mm -hmm. So think about what your prospect's seeing and do something different. That's breaking the medium. But the other way is to break the method. So for example, if everyone's doing email, look at how it's all done and what can you do differently? So I'll give you an example. I sent out an invisible ink email uh, with extraordinary success. What I did is real simple, is I took a white font and put against the white background so you could not read the message. Above it in a black font, it very quickly said, this is an invisible ink, click and drag over it to see your message. The open rate and the click-through rate was a over what we historically have. Maybe it harkens back to when we were kids and you play games like that. It was a secret message encoded capacity. But it, it hit all three of those elements. First, it was different. How many times have you received an invisible ink email? Probably never. That's a never, good thing. Yeah. yeah, probably never. So that means it's different. Second, it's attractive, meaning there was a curiosity play in here. Like, oh, I want to see what's going on. What's the message to me? And then there was a direct built into it where I asked people to go to a link and click on it to take the next action. So that may work in your industry. If, if now I'm the first author done it, has done that, maybe other authors will replicate it. But if you're in the insurance industry and no one try the invisible ink thing, R and D it for me, rip off and duplicate for me and take it, but don't do what the industry is doing. That's the big lesson. It's also that, that particular one's also kinesthetic because you had to do an act to oh, bring- you totally. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It engaged more than the passive perception, right? Sight involved uh, gesticulation which to your point is powerful because now that's an affirmation when a customer does a physical movement, this is kind of uh, advanced topic stuff, but when an, uh, when a customer takes a physical action in a movement, they're more likely to see through it because they're physically engaged in it. Kinesthetics. Mm. I love it. That is awesome. Awesome. So if we need to differentiate, how do we differentiate in that sea of noise where sometimes it can feel like there's a thousand marketing messages coming at us every single day and they're all trying to differentiate. So how do we differentiate in that space? Yeah. So the first thing is to look at what the common noise is and and right here's the not to do list effectively. Mm. Like everyone's doing email marketing or everyone's running Facebook ads. Maybe that's not what I should do. Now, again, we got to look at the medium and method. Maybe we just don't do Facebook at all, or maybe we can do Facebook in a new way. So first you look at what not to do or what you want to break. Secondly is now we start investigating outside our industry. Most business owners I spoke to, they all are steeped in their own industry. They go to their own industry conferences, but they don't go to others. It's actually at these others where you get new ideas. As an example, uh, as an author, I'm going to author conferences, how to market books. You get the three or four most popular best practices. I ended up at a cleaning conference because I was speaking there. I also was attending as a guest listening in. And uh, one of the speakers went up on stage and he said, if you have a product in a store, like a cleaning product, some customers, about 10 or 15% of customers before they make a purchase, will look at the materials on the back. And if there's an 800 number with a pre-recorded message, you'll close about 50% of those customers. So on the back of my second book, The Pumpkin Plan, I put in the back an 800 number for people to call. And sure enough, sales increased on average by about five to 6%. 
So I took an idea from another industry, brought it to mine. It was novel among books and it supported uh, more sales. So interesting. I think that just speaks to the idea of being a continual learner and not ever thinking we have cornered yes. the strategy and the one, yes. the one best practice or the one thing that yes. always works and just saying, let's learn. Let's continue. Curiosity will save you. So be a constant learner, be a constant observer. I'll give you another tip. This, this is something I rolled out just about three months ago, and it seems to be having great success. I've put what's called a key in it, meaning an indicator of a success. And any marketing you do, if you can key it, have some way to measure it, that's really important. So I'm, I'm taking a flight to go to a speaking engagement. Everyone's all masked up, it's COVID. And I noticed everyone's looking down at their phones in the airport and in the airplane, trying to get on the Wi-Fi. I noticed one person, when I tried to hop on the Wi-Fi, had a hotspot that said the CIA. I'm like, huh, that's, that's cute, that's funny, it's kind of funny. But then I was like, what if I had one that said, buy Mike's book? Or what if I had one that said, buy Get Different, which is my book, on Amazon? So I bought a wireless access point, which is 10 times more powerful than a hotspot. I have in my backpack, you can get a little small one, it's about the size of my fist. It costs $25. I plugged into a battery, I got as a gift. And now I have a hotspot, a Wi-Fi access point that says buy, get different on Amazon. People see it at airports, people see it on the airplane. But also when I get to an event, I go to the AV booth and I say, hey, can I leave my bag here that has the Wi-Fi in it for the day? Because I'm going to be speaking later on. They're like, no problem. So I'm broadcasting to that room. People are coming in and they're looking. Literally, the last event I did, it was at least three or four people came up to me and said, did you know this event is marketing your book over the Wi-Fi? And I'm like, I, I didn't know that. I'm like, I'm like, this is my thinking beard, my evil thinking beard. I'm like, I didn't know that. I start grooming myself, which is an acknowledgement that people are noticing. Does that That's result in an immediate sale? No, but that's a move to grow awareness. And that when I'm speaking, I'm asking people to pick up a copy of the book. It's so interesting. It's it's definitely unexpected. It's something that nobody nobody would be saying. I've already um, tuning. I'm tuning out this message because I've seen a thousand people do this before, or it's common. That's right. And could you imagine if a thousand people did it? Then we would just ignore it. Like, oh, here's right. another Wi-Fi marketer. And that's the power of, of different. Is it gets noticed. It's the weakness when it gets replicated. So when you're doing different, you got to milk that cow for all it's worth. And at a certain point, people replicate it, but they replicate, replicate generally slowly. So I've been talking about this Wi-Fi thing to authors, other people for three, four months now since I started doing it. And I've yet to find anyone doing it because of fear. There's still that fear trigger. Like what if, what if the event host like yells at me or something or get put in the corner? Like we still feel that fear trigger. So very few people adopt it. Usually people adopt things only when the early adopters are fully adopted into it. So mm -hmm. different has a runway. Um, sometimes and I'm experiencing for months or even years before it becomes habituated because it's been saturated. Hey, Mike, uh, the, the, that fear is real for people. Yeah. But what's interesting is if you have a goods or service that people want, they, they actually want you to be successful. Your <laughs> customer, your customer's, want you to be successful. Why? Because they want you not to only maintain so they can continue to have that goods or service, but they want, they believe in you to innovate and bring them other things that they probably are going to like. And yes. that's what <clears throat> the businesses I'm involved with, with my managers and things like that, they have these fears too, you know, and, and I'll just give you an example of one, uh, you know, now everybody is, you know, has, the ability to pay with their phone or yeah. you have an iPod, you have an iPad at the register and you pay and then you have the ability just to leave a tip or I get, I get um, my coffee at Starbucks in the morning and I'm just going to go in and pick it up. They're still asking me for a tip. Yeah. Uh, Correct, but what's yeah. inter but to, what's interesting is a lot of my managers are, they don't want to ask for the tip like that. They want, and they have a fear that, oh, people are going to be, be mad at me and so on and so forth. And yet, when our, um, our thermal tape ran out and they couldn't leave a tip, they kept saying, how can we leave a tip? How can we leave a tip? So they were getting reinforced about the thing that they were actually fearful about. It's a very interesting comment uh, about how people's minds work in this fear. Yeah, there, there's a form. I love what you're saying. Uh, I, I think it, it triggers also reciprocity. If people derive benefit from you, to your point, they want to be successful because it's the way they can serve you back for being of service to them. 
could, you know, I always like take extreme examples. Could you imagine a, a heart surgeon uh, comes up to you and she says, um, you know, I don't promote my heart surgery. I don't tell anyone about it. Cause I really feel that's bothersome. And I, I only do like one heart surgery a year as a result. Like, do you want, do you want heart surgery from her? No, right. I want someone that has competence, which means they've repeated the service multiple. I want someone that's actually very proud of what they do. And therefore they promote it out there. They put it out there through whatever networks they can. And that's true, not just for the heart surgeon, but for all of us. I, I as a consumer of your offering, I don't want to be the one and only I want to be the one that you've proved it on other people and continue to enhance your expertise. And you believe in yourself so much that you proudly put it out there. I feel a lot more confident in that percept in that customer relationship. Oh, that's excellent. Excellent perspective. So let me ask you this then, Mike, and I hope that you have a great answer that's going to wow us all on this, but you seem that if you're saying in the get different book that we need to be on that creative curve of being the early adopter, being the creator of brand new ideas. So A, how do we figure out how to know which new ways or new ideas are going to be successful versus maybe a a divergent uh, shiny object syndrome and it's just a waste of time. Um, And then how do you have the courage to keep innovating and keep getting those new ideas rather than just sticking with one that's working and letting it fizzle out? Yeah. So I'll, I'll give you answers to both. The first one in regards to uh, how to find a new idea that's going to have potential success. Like, how do I know it'll work? You do it through experiments. Traditional marketing teachings say have a marketing plan. And I found that actually that's a mistake. So the marketing plan says, here's what I'm committing to. And uh, if it's failing to work, often the response is you're not doing enough of it. Those Facebook ads you ran, not working, not doing enough. That ad you're running in the newspaper, not working, you got to do more of it, which simply means you know, roll out more bucks. But instead, I think we need to do marketing experiments. And I use that term specifically in the book because an experiment means it's designed to effectively work or not work, but to learn from it. We don't know what's coming. So we want to do very low cost experiments. That wireless access point, that was an experiment. It literally cost $25 and I'm experimenting with it. It's not perfect, but it's, it's something that's showing potential and I'm trying to enhance it. This mm-hmm. shelf I have over my shoulder is a result of experiments. I noticed that my contemporaries, authors, have a bookshelf behind themselves regularly with their books displayed. I get it. But it's a standard bookshelf, and there before it's come white noise. I started testing out different bookshelf ideas, and once I came upon this, I did it on a small scale first, people noticed, like, oh, you got a weird bookshelf. What are those books? I'm like, ah, weird bookshelf gets attention. And then I got this tree going on, and I can see that now it's actually resulting in sales. So experiment frequently, do it as inexpensively as possible, amplify what works. That's how you're going to find what works. How to keep it going? Well, it's rooted in kindness. Like I said, it's that you have that motivation, realize you're being of service. And uh, some people are so afraid of trying out new marketing. You can actually use random acts of kindness to get started. So when people are afraid to try different, what I tell them is, you know what? Just do something for a neighbor or friend without them ever discovering you. Bring their mail to their door. Leave a, 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 a note saying, I'm just you're such a privilege to have in our neighborhood. Uh, fill a, a meter for someone at a parking spot. Just say a gracious word to someone you're passing in the airport. Those random acts of kindness, while you'll never get accolades for it, you will feel this inner energy. Oh my God, I was just of service to someone. And that actually starts building this muscle in realizing that when you do different marketing, you're actually doing a deliberate act of kindness. So you can get started that way. And that random act of kindness I found, if you do that, if you habituate that or become, uh, make that a habit, your marketing will actually amplify. That is fascinating. Well, I am very excited to get your book. Um, so tell us again where we get it. I believe I have the, the URL. We're going to make sure that we get this on all of our podcasts and, um, in the show notes and, um, remind us of the launch date. Yeah. Thank you. So the the hot spot to go to is go get different.com while the book launches on September 21st. I do invite right now to go to you to go to go get different.com because of the free resources, but these aren't cheesy generic free resources. I compiled a hundred different experiments you can run, including the invisible ink email, stuff like that, that will cost you nothing or practically nothing. And you can start getting immediate impact. That's for free. Just go to go get different.com and click on free resources to download it. Awesome. I love that you're giving so much value upfront before you're even selling a book. That's amazing. (laughs) Thank so you. You're being of service. Thank, Thank you, you so much, Mike, for joining us yet a third time on the show. And 
I really encourage you, if you're listening, go ahead and get, get different, sign up for those free resources and you're pre-ordering now. And then also I really, really recommend going back to profit first and pumpkin plan as well, especially as these are models of finding out a financial way to build your business, continue to scale and grow and be in a position where you're truly successful. We highly recommend profit first on a regular basis. And we implement that in the work that we do with our clients, because it is so crucial to make sure that you're profitable from the beginning of a business. So Mike, thank you for being influential on us. Thank you for doing this great work for the world and really helping entrepreneurs and business owners get to that place of true freedom. Rachel, thank you, Bruce. Thank you so much. I appreciate both of you. Thank you, Michael. Thank you. And in closing, if you are listening, remember success leaves clues. So model the successful few, not the crowd and build a life and business you love. We'll see you.